the Palace Amusement Company Limited stock. It's on the main market of the of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. So we're gonna be doing a full review of the company. It's gonna show you, you know, a little bit about the company and its history. We're gonna talk about the financials of the company, what they've been doing for the past couple of years. We'll talk about their dividends. Have they paid any? Uh, what was the last time that they paid? Then we're gonna look at any upcoming news or and as well as the future of the company. So we've done this here a couple of times. You should be quite familiar with it already. If it's your first time here, I'm Jermaine, co-founder of Learn or Invest, and our aim is financial and investor education. So we do reviews like this all the time to help you learn more about publicly listed companies and other types of investments so you can make an informed investment decision. So let's get started. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, welcome back. So let us open with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the ability to produce wealth. We pray, Lord, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone, welcome back. It's good to see you. It's 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 been a minute. Um, so let me just jump right in to this review. So I have to say uh, that this review is sponsored by JMB Moneyline. I thank them so much for being sponsors of our stock review series. So we do two reviews per month. They are sponsored by JMB, and I want to thank them so much for, for enabling us to continue to provide this content to our, our community members. So feel free to check out the link in the description, which will, which will give you more information about Moneyline. Okay. So I will also say that any information that I review here is for discussion, education, entertainment, and illustrative purposes only, and should not be construed as professional financial advice, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any securities, especially the one in question here today. So we're going to be looking at Palace Amusement Company Limited, and if you're watching this now, then you've no doubt heard about how the last few weeks have been for them. They've announced a stock split. We're going to talk about that a little later. But first, we're going to start with just an overview of the company because we want to understand when we get down to the later conversation what we're talking about, what context we'll, we'll have of the company. All right. So it's important that we lay that foundation before we do our, our analysis. So Palace Amusement, I mean, it's going to be hard not to know about them. It's, it's everyone, I believe, might have been to the movies at least once. If you have never been to the movies, let me know in, in the chat. Uh, but uh, Palace Amusement Company 1921 Limited was formed by Audley Maurice, hopefully that's pronounced correctly, and operated as a private company prior to 1921. And then he reformed the company and offered shares to the public in 1921. Right, so the company is over 100 years old. Currently, they have um, a few locations. So we're seeing here Carib 5, that's probably the most popular one. They actually had a fire in 1996. So they had to rebuild the, the complex. So they had one cinema at first in, in Crossroads, then they would have re, remodeled it to five. We have Sunshine Palace, that's over by Portmore, that was recently done. We have Palace. Multiplex, that's that's Fairview Shopping Center, and then we have Palace Cineplex, right? So this is currently the, the makeup. Uh, they would have had locations like the drive through that was closed down last year, and they would have tried other locations, you know, in the past, but based on, you know, attendance, revenue, et cetera, they've had to close those down. So this, at the point of this video, this is the current makeup. It may, of course, change over time. So this would be the founder here, oddly, and and what you'll notice is that it's had quite a few, you know, it's 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 moved through <laughs> over the years. It is a hundred year old company, so so naturally, um, with, with the passing of of oddly, there would be you know new 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 management. 
So it made the rounds until we get to, I'm, I'm actually going to share it on the next slide, what, what the current ownership is like. Um, so, you know, speaking about the early days, it said Caribou was an international concert hall showcasing the likes of the great Sammy Davis Jr., Nat King Cole, Louis Armstrong, etc. And so, you know, move forward in recent times, BP Records introduced talented local artists in the lobby of Carib 5, among them Tanya Stevens, Taurus Riley, who signed autographs to meet and greet. They actually used to do a lot more of those events in the past. I don't see them as often anymore, but who knows, they may they may try to do those more in, in the future. Um, in 1962, so remember I mentioned, um, you know, leadership would have changed or ownership would have changed. Russ Graham Investments Limited, owned by Russell Graham, acquired controlling shares in the company. And then after some 27 years, he sold his shares to his son, Douglas, who has been the managing director since then. So for the past 60 years, Douglas Graham has been managing director for the company. So the company was the major distributor to all cinemas across the island from, from Hanover to, to Portland. Okay. Over the past few years, and, and what, what I'm doing here is setting the stage because we're going to be, be talking about, um, you know, the type of company, the impact, or just the the, the 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 history of the company. So with the type of industry that they're in, the, in they've faced as a number of challenges over the years. Um, so things like, you know, television. So t television coming in or, or, or seeing greater adoption would have posed a, a challenge to, to the industry. There was a there was a time when you saw, you know, persons just litter the streets with with illegal DVDs, VHS, etc. We had the whole, you know, series in the past where it was about, you know, pirated movies, etc. And they're saying here none of those those events in the past dealt a blow like COVID nineteen, which is what they've been dealing with for the past couple of years, All right? So they've been, you know, kind of tested in terms of their their resilience as a company. They're still open, um, and they were able to see some some recovery over the last few months because of the, the reopening that took place in March of last year. So we'll talk about that a little later, as I said. But this is just you know giving you some some background in terms of top ten shareholders. This is what we have here. So 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 Russ Graham, as we mentioned before, has sixty five percent of the company. Then you were, we're seeing the listing here. Of course, we also have Mayberry Investments Limited, who is a 1% shareholder. We have um, Bridgestone Management Services Limited as well. Those are you know two companies that uh, you may be familiar with. So this is just a makeup of the top 10 shareholders of the company. All right, so we're going to talk about the, the financials a little bit now. So I'm going to show you some highlights, and then we're going to go to the financial statements and talk about it a little bit more because this is going to be very important in our, our understanding the current state of the company, right? So the period in review, so we would have looked at the first quarter ended for September 30th. And so the notes here are saying that the quarter was encouraging as seen in the segment report of No. 2. We're going to get to that soon. The losses were experienced. The trend of steady improvements in revenue that had begun the last quarter of the previous financial year continued with, with attendance in numbers in excess of 130 patrons for the for the three months. So films like Thor, Love and Thunder, Minions welcomed approximately 60,000 viewers in the month of July and they registered um, their delight in being once again being able to come out to cinema. So I'll pause here. So the company has would have seen, of course, a just complete shutdown because of you know curfews and and stuff like that um, that were in place because moviegoers would be watching movies in the evenings, right? So if it is that you are required to be home by seven or eight, then it would make sense for the for the theater to be open, right? So what 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 they're saying here is that because now things are quote unquote back to normal, more and more persons are beginning to come out. Now, one of the things that has an impact here is the habit of persons. Now, with persons being home during the pandemic, 
maybe indulging in services like Netflix, Disney Plus, etc., other services, maybe they've formed other habits in terms of routines, etc. They may not be as avid moviegoers as before. Right, so it will take them time to kind of relearn and, and form that habit of going to the movies again. We also have the impact in terms of cost of going to the movies, etc., which one has to consider because it's not it's not a necessity. The product that they offer is not a necessity, it's entertainment. So we value entertainment as individuals, but it's usually lower on the list in terms of priorities for us. So that's something to bear in mind. Let me continue. With what we're seeing here so they had um in celebration of the company's 101 anniversary because remember 1921 to 2022 would have been 101 years they they had a campaign that was held in september and as a token of their appreciation to loyal and valued customers they offered one low rate for any seed category location or group patrons responded positively by and more than 7,000 visited on that day so what what this is saying is that they're they're doing things to try and get persons to come back out right so even as the group continues to experience positive crowd response and a move towards recovery it continues to take steps to to, to control costs and manage cash flows and balance maintaining operation balance with maintaining operational efficiency in their cinemas that in mind the decision was taken not to renew the lease arrangement for the new Kingston drive through I mentioned that before, that they decided to close that drive through And um, I see someone in the chat mentioning, um, you know, Kalila show. Kalila has done a series of interviews about Palace. So, you know, be sure to, to check those out if you can to give background on maybe the last two years of the company. So what was mentioned that there were challenges in terms of maintaining the drive through um, so, for example, one of the issues would have been, th think about, for example, the most recent cars where you may not be able to completely turn off the light or, or you may need to turn off the car. There was also disturbances in terms of around the, around the cinema. I believe there was a complex next door that their lights could not be turned off. So that would have impacted the, the experience of the patrons, etc. Things like that um, would have been shared in the interview over on, on Kalila's channel. So just search for Palace Amusement and you'll see the, those videos to get that context, right? That's what we're talking about here. Um, so, so they made the decision to close that, that drive-through. It says here at the end, and I'm, hope, I'm hoping that you're able to see it, if not just maximize the video and zoom in and you should be able to see it just fine. So their goal is to ensure that their audience enjoys the ultimate movie experience um, so they've done, you know, for example, a partnership with with Give Me, aiming to, you know, provide, I guess, greater value to its to its customers, right? So I just wanted to set that stage. So what we're looking at now is a breakdown of revenue, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop sharing this for a second so that you can maybe see it a lot better. Um, so just bear with me here. Oh, no, this is not the right report that I want to see. Hold on. Just one second, guys. I'm just going to bring up the most recent report. All right. So let us go to quarterly financials. That's what we want to see. We're going to look at price history soon. We're looking at the first quarter results. So this is what we want to see here. All right. So what we were looking at is a breakdown of the revenue. So that's that's what I want to go back to here. So the notes that I read earlier were from this page. And let me just try and zoom in. Let me open that in desktop. Yeah, you should be seeing it a lot better now, hopefully. Apologies if you're not able to see it clearly. So I was I was mentioning that we were we're looking at the year in review. Um, yep, so we're looking at this page before. So the year in review. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. That should be a lot better. So this was what I read through before, right? Taken from the first quarter report. 
And what we're, lo we're looking at here is a segment reporting, meaning breakdown of their revenue, right? So wherever companies provide this, it's going to be important to look at that information, right? So this is the revenue for 2022. So we're seeing breakdown of box office receipts, confectionery sales. And as you notice, um, the, the confectionery sales is usually more than 50% box office receipts, right? Which means the food, they, they, they'll make money from, from that um, more than half of what the ticket sales would be, right? Film rental is there. They, they, they haven't done any of that for 2022. Screen advertising. So this is revenue from advertising. And as you notice, this doesn't really bring in a lot of revenue considerably for them, just $2 million in screen advertising, for example, at Carib, and the rest would be lower. So overall, that's that's not really, you know, that's that's not a that's 10 million out, out of total revenue. That that's not a lot for the for the year. Okay. Then we have other activities which are not stated here. And that would be for 2022. I think they have it for 2021 as well. So we are seeing the growth in terms of the numbers for box office receipts here. So you'd have seen growth there. Um, so just to kind of show you where they're coming from 2021 to 2022. So there is, is growth and recovery in terms of what the numbers show you for 2022. So that is a positive sign for the company. Um, but let's go to now the, the breakdown in terms of revenue because that's what, what, what we want to look at. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. So, so what we're seeing here is revenue would have been 249 million, but direct expenses would have been 250 million. So, so immediately there, there's a, a gross loss, then admin expenses, your finance costs, etc. They would have had a loss of 53 million for, for, for the period ending September, 2022. So a $53 million loss there. Same period last year, it would have lost almost 80 million. So the losses are getting fewer, but you know, considerably, um, you'd have to think about how well. So they make a majority of their money based on movies, which means they have to be the right type of movies that will make persons want to come out and come out repeatedly. Right. And if you think about it, persons are relatively still concerned about the pandemic. And, you know, we're seeing possibly another strain, a tox of, 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 of different strains of COVID, et cetera. And though no one expects there to be another lockdown, persons are still sometimes a little bit hesitant to go into spaces that are enclosed. Right. So that's that's possibly a, a consideration in terms of total numbers. But I don't don't believe they're seeing pre-COVID numbers just yet because if we go to let me see if we can see the 2018 numbers. Okay, I'm gonna use another tool here. Um so forgive me here. Let me just switch to that quickly. So hopefully you can see my screen here. So this is a tool called Tika. Again, link for this is in the description. You know, check it out if you haven't heard about it before. So what I'm doing here is looking at the financials for Palace Amusement Company. Um, so in terms of 2018, they would have had here over a billion dollars in revenue, right? So that, that would have been an amazing year for them. Oh, wow, well, you're not able to see this. Hold on, let me zoom in here. Sorry. Is that, is that better? The apologies, guys. I thought that you'd, you'd be able to see this. Um, all right. Yeah. So I was saying in 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 2018 they would have had I think their best year based on revenues. So they are still a ways away from those numbers, right? So that's that's a context I want you to look at here. Even 2019, even um, 2020, what we're seeing here, uh, 919,000. And well, 919 million, right? So just bear that in mind in terms of revenues that, that they're doing and where they stand. Okay. All right. So let me go back to this. So that would be um, 
you know, $53 million loss for that quarter. In terms of their, their balance sheet, they have, you know, property plants and, and, and equipment for $1 billion. Of course, naturally, you would, you'd expect a lot in terms of non-current assets for them. Um, in terms of inventories, investments here, $205 million, cash and cash equivalents of about $74 million. Um, then we have long-term debt of 711 million here and they would have mentioned um getting financing from vm and i believe from scotia i'll try to get some more information on that shortly so that would be i believe a, a large makeup of their existing debt um so i believe they would have mentioned it here i'm looking through their their report their annual report here so let me just go through it. So they mentioned company borrowing $653 million from, from, from Victoria Mutual Investments, and they would have had a loan from, from BNS for $262 million, right? So those are loans that they're currently repaying. Um, so yeah, let's move on to cash flow. Let me know if you have questions about the company, by the way, as I'm going through, I'll be able to take them at the end. I may probably just do a quick go through to see if there's anything here now. Ah, all right, Roger, thank you for being here. Good evening, guys. Um, yes, thank you for liking the video. James, you've never been to the movies, you should check it out. It's it's definitely a good experience. It's something that um, you know, my wife and I would do a lot of. It's it's something that we try to do as often as we can, but of course we have to consider costs. Um, so it's something that maybe you'll try to do depending on the movie. And again, I'm just imagining that most persons are probably thinking the same way. I remember, you know, back when you know the, the Marvel movies were a big hit we would be probably seeing maybe five to 10 movies per year, right? Um, that's just how many movies they were coming out. They have not really ramped back up to that place as yet. There was a Spider-Man movie recently. There was a Thor movie, but that's maybe two movies for the year. I think they would have shown, if, if I go back to the report here, you'll see what's on their slate for next year in terms of movies that are, that are expected. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, so they have here movies that are coming for next year. So you have John Wick 4, Avatar, you know, Black Panther would have been out recently, Quantumania coming out in February. The question is, are persons going to be interested in coming out to these movies in the same way, right? So that's, of course, the most glaring concern that you would have for a company like this, its ability, its its ability to generate revenues consistently and to be profitable, because they they just may have a few challenging periods ahead of them, right? So let me go through where we're looking at cash flow statement. Then we're gonna go through the the MDNA in terms of notes, right? So cash flow here would have had negative um, cash flow from 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 operating activities. They would have had encashments of, of investments to generate some cash here of about nine million they would have paid interest of 13 million so that's 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 would have um you know that's that's the state of their cash as at 2022 right so nice and and concise easy to go through let me see if there's anything else that i wanted to read through here i do like the way that it was it was broken down so I appreciate that that simple nature through which it was done. I'm just trying to see if there's anything that we want to go through here. There's also a breakdown that they provided. So typically, you don't see this breakdown in 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 Q1 statement. So it's it's actually appreciated to see it here. Let me zoom in and and again the obvious thing here for them in terms of expenses, film costs would have been their highest expense of about 67 million. Of course, that's a business that they're in. So that's gonna be a great expense for them. Cost of, of inventory is recognized as expense. That would be 48 million. Other major one would be staff costs of about 72 million. 
and theater rental of 16 million. Okay, so those are the major expenses that they would have. I would have mentioned the management before, so let's kind of go through to the outlook, right? But before, before we get to the news, well, let me actually go back to, to the slideshow first. I, I want to talk about the price history first. So we went through these numbers before. So let's look at the, the price history, and I'm going to use the JMMB Moneyline platform to go through that. So let me bring that up on the screen. And again, I just want to thank and highlight JMMB as sponsor for this video. All right, so to view a price history, let me just zoom in again for you so you can see it a lot better. So I'm logged into Moneyland right now. If you go to other services, stock market summary, you can pretty much just search for the company that you want to see here. So PAL is the ticker for Palette's Amusement. So I can find it here. If you're not sure what the ticker is, you can usually go to the instrument summary on the Jamaica Stock Exchange and it will show the ticker symbol there. Okay. So I've clicked on this. So it would have went to a high today of $1,902. If that sounds really high to you, it is the most, it is the highest priced stock on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. It actually goes back to about, let me see, this was from, from last year. No, this is in 2019. It went to a high of 2,900. And what we're seeing here is in about 2020. Of course, we know what happened in, in, in March 2020. So it would have, you know, found its way down to about 1,100 in 2020. It went further down um, in March of 2021 to about $644. And it's been it's been there for for a little bit, meaning it it went up a little bit to about fourteen hundred in twenty twenty one, and then found its way back down to six hundred and twenty one dollars within last year, right? So within the last twelve months, and then this would have been November last year, and then of course we saw the price started to move up with announcement of the stock split, and we're going to talk about that. So yes, they are coming from a high of about three thousand dollars, and. So there are persons who might have possibly been holding from this point who are still in a loss, right? So bear that in mind. Um, we have the orders here in the queue. So if you if you look at the sell side, you're gonna see small quantities because total shares outstanding for the company rests at about total shares outstanding is just one one point four million, right? And if you look at the makeup of the top 10, how much shares is being held, etc. In the public, there's not many shares in, in circulation. So the stock split is supposed to help with that in, in terms of liquidity of the stock, etc. We see for the last 12 months, 620 to about $1,900 in price and volume. The most volume traded within the last 12 months would have been 2,300 units. Now, the value of that is going to be massive based on the price per share but just, you know, something to, to look at there, all right? And then, so let's let's go back to Moneyline. In terms of buy, buy, buy orders, you're not going to see large volume here just based on the price, right? Um, in terms of last trades, and this is one of the things I like about Moneyline as well, you're able to see the last, you're, you're able to see the trades for the day. It does reset at 12 p.m. so you have to look at it you have to log in and check it out before then we're able to see the orders that were placed and at what time well the orders that were filled and at what price and time so that's what we're seeing here um so that's that's been moving let me go to the last month here so within a month it would have been somewhere around 800 dollars at december 13th and as I said, it would have found its way up and you'll see based on the timing of the news and the movement of the price, the price has been moving up in, in anticipation, well, upon the announcement of the stock split, right? Of course, um, I'm going to talk about why I think, you know, investors should still be concerned um, at, at, at a, a later point in the video, right? But this is what we've been seeing. Uh, volumes have been increasing <laughs> uh, but still still relatively low and and again um a 600 to 1 stock split is going to help with that so that's that for now 
So let me log out here and go back here, right? So month to date, quarter to date, it's up. Uh, but if you think about, let's say, the last two years, it would still be down, right? So that's something to bear in mind if you would have been a, a shareholder from then, okay? In terms of dividend announcement, the last dividend announcement that, that I found was January 2019, right? So they were announced at the time at $2.00 per stock. And if you look at the stock price at that time, that dividend yield would not have been attractive. So just bear that in mind, but they did pay a dividend at that point. So that is something that it seems to be if they're, if they're able to, to maintain a certain amount of profits, have good cash flow, then they may be able to pay a dividend as well. But bear in mind, remember what I said, that 2018 would have been their best year in terms of revenues. So it's not unusual to see a dividend following that. Right. But then there would be an article that says later that year. So this one was found on Loop News, November 1st, 2019. The palace says no dividend payment after heavy reinvestment in Portmore. Right. So that's a Sunshine Palace uh, location. They, they decided not to pay a dividend. And of course, we know what happened in 2020. All right. So let's talk about, you know, stock split and stuff like that now. But we're going to talk about just some of the articles that we've seen for them over the last couple of years, right? So this was released on the Gleano. Um, so Palace Amusement is still far away from recovery, but its ticket sales have climbed back to around half their pre-pandemic peak levels, right? Half their, pre their peak pandemic levels. This was October last year. So at, Octo so at October last year, they were about half, right? Um, driving down annual losses. Um, so the losses are getting less, right? So net losses at 261 million at the year ended June was improved on the 383 million that the company pled in the previous year, right? So they went from 383 million loss to 261 million and would have seen it, you know, get less and less over time, right? Um, revenue rose sixfold from 105 million to 649 million. At their low point in 2021, revenue had fallen to around a tenth of the pre-pandemic turnover of 1.1 billion. That was what they would have done in 2018, all right? So the release of more exciting movies as well as movie producers reprioritizing the release of movies in theaters first before distribution to online platforms, aiding the growth of revenue numbers. And that's something that you'd have seen here where, of course, during the pandemic, some 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 movie producers were trying to do like you know a netflix first release or, or a disney plus release so they tried that for a little while but of course it didn't work out so well for them based on numbers there so they started to you know shift focus again to to of course you know theaters right so that's that's that one from the Gleano. this one is from the observer so this is where the stock split um was announced so Palace Amusements Board of Directors will meet next Tuesday. Um, that meeting already took place to consider the possibility of a stock split. All right, so this article, let me tell you the date, was December 15th, right? And again, we would have seen the price started to move up in, in, in December. So a stock split is where the number of shares is increased by a factor with the stock price decreasing by that factor. Of course, 600 to 1 means one share is is going to be um multiplied by 600 and the price is going to be divided by 600 right we're going to do a video to explain stock split at another point but that's essentially how the stock split works right this is usually done when there's a low there's a possibly low supply of shares in the market which we have seen based on the volumes being traded or the price has become expensive to investors so the two things hold hold true here low volume expensive price in 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 terms of price per share right so we mentioned already that there's only 1.4 million shares outstanding and based on how the price has has been traded it's 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 not considered an an affordable price for for investors to be able to purchase i'm going to link these articles for you to go through them so just be sure to to read it to understand a little bit more about the company all right so let me go back to the report now and let's talk about the outlook for the company. Then I'll get into my comments and, and perspectives as to where, where the company can, 
can can likely be headed right so this is from their annual report and i'm reading over the left here right so it says the summer is now behind us and for the first time since the pandemic they welcomed approximately sixty thousand patrons um in in july and they look forward to even more with with releases such as black panther um the way of water for for avatar actually zoom in just a little bit more so you can see it a lot better and then fast 10 is coming out as well next year so the thing to note here and this is what i thought about you're likely to have you're likely going to see a case where they're having like their best quarter in the last two years uh maybe best half in the last two years so you can kind of expect those those narratives to come out because you know black panther is still showing um still doing well i imagine avatar i'm not sure about really but fast x i'm almost certain that that should get a good take up as well so you we, we may see them again being able to to minimize those losses possibly come out of lost and go into profit um for the next few quarters so that would be something um interesting to look for right so while there's still no safe harbor in sight the horizon seemed clear with a promise of silver linings behind the pandemic clouds um so in the year ahead um well would have spoken about that before they they've 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 also been listed as a merchant on the Gift Me platform in order to expand their market presence and global accessibility by giving their patrons, both local and overseas, the option to purchase digital gift cards. So this was, I think, a program that they had in the past that was really well. Um, I actually have never been able to fully register for that program because of an issue with my credit card online. For some reason, I don't know if it's the bank or it's a website, never been able to, to, to do it um so anyway let's let's move on right um so let me see i think they have a little bit more information here so so this page just kind of speaks to their their customer service and rewards program so things like you know two for one days movie vouchers you could get they did mention um upgrades to come so some elements of their rewards program were affected due to the pandemic so they're rebuilding that to, to hopefully relaunch it soon. Okay. All right. So I think that's it. And then it gets into the statements, et cetera. All right. Okay. So um, let me kind of talk about the company now. So, so, so I laid the dividend. Last dividend that was paid was in 2019. It was a dividend of $2. So we'd have to look at what the stock price was at in 2019 to see what the yield was. My guess it's not a very would not have been a very attractive yield at that point i may be wrong but based on where we know the stock price to be um it's it's just it's just a, a quick assumption there but you know what i'm hearing that i should not make assumptions so let me go and just check what the price was at that point so let me check the easiest to check here All right, so I'm just gonna go back to see what the price was in January 2019. All right, let's let's do that. So let me go share my screen again so you can see what I'm seeing. So I'm just looking on on takeoff for the last five years. So let me go to 2019. So in January 2019, the price was about $1,500. So two dollar was the dividend announced for for almost you know 1,500 share price. So that yield, of course, would have been um not a good one right so so bear that in mind um definitely orville illiquid is 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 liquid illiquid and high price so again this, the, the stock split could benefit them in that way where um liquidity would would improve and price would be definitely more palatable for for investors at that point so Roger is saying, I know I'll be buying into the stock split, but I'd love to know which date on the stock exchange this will happen. All right, so um, let's get that information, right? I think I can reference the same article. Okay. All right, so let me put that on the screen here. Okay. All 
All right, one sec. Why Orville? I, I have no comment, right? So, um, so the, their their AGM is scheduled to be held on the twenty fourth at two p.m. If a stock split is proposed, it could possibly be added to the other three resolutions. Well, so I mean, of course, we know that it is is being considered here. So it would be on on the twenty fourth, and then they would likely announce a split date. Or was there was there a most recent article than this? Let me let me search. Alice amusement go news yeah this is the one that we read right yeah this is the one i'm reading now okay yeah same same article okay cool i just i just wanted to to be sure so what what you'd have to do roger is get back um you know check out if you if you are a, sh a shareholder go to um yeah, that's that that's the date that that you want to have on your radar, the 24th of January, right? Because coming out of that, you're likely going to announce the date and then um it's 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 taken from there. So the thing is this, right? A few things to think about here. Um, you want to look at how it's being traded now. Now the, the announcement or the or or the consideration for split has been almost a month now, right? So the, the price has appreciated. From about six hundred dollars to two thousand dollars already, right? That'd be about two hundred percent, right? So bear that in mind; it's already grown two hundred percent. So you want to be careful if you're looking to to invest in the company at this point. You might run the risk of overpaying again. Speak to your licensed financial advisor there, but that would be a concern that I would have in terms of overpaying at this point. Um, so what you're not guaranteed and we saw where in the past now no no two stock splits are the same no two companies are the same would have seen stock splits in the past not necessarily go to investors expectations and what i'm saying the reason why i'm saying that is if you're planning to to invest in the company and your outlook is long term the price you buy won't matter much if you're if if you're planning to trade short term based on a specific activity, then your timing is going to be extremely important, right? So we hear this thing, you know, time in the market, you have to be sure that you're timing it well, because you don't want to buy it at the wrong time with an expectation of appreciation, and you don't get the appreciation you're expecting, because it's not, it's not impossible for the stock not to continue to increase after split. Now, the argument may be, well, the stock price has been, you know, in the thousands for years. If it's being brought down to like, you know, $3, $4, anywhere under $10, that's going to be a lot more palatable. But now the question comes to, is is it a company that, that, that you would want to invest in with the current state of things, right? There's a lot of there, there's debt to be cleared. There's innovation in the space that's needed. So those things that you, you, you have to really consider and and kind of see, you know, whether or not this will suit you in terms of an investment, right? So what what I would like to see from the company is our, our strategies to 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 improve revenues and profitability. I think um, I mean any innovation that can be made in the space would be welcome uh, we see where actually um, a, a cinema in in Trinidad is doing a rights issue right now we don't know if they're gonna go down the same path there, there are talks that they will likely be be raising funds we have not seen that announcement so that would be um, just a possibility at this point nobody knows so but it's clear that they need to the stock split at this point would would likely be something that is maybe a first step in a series of events because if things remain the same if if all the company does is split its stock then it, that's likely just going to be some maybe short term activity but then of course it it's not likely going to going to show much growth based on again what what the numbers are saying for the company so 
Just bear that in mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> Aline, so someone will have to hold it the, the other end of the seat. That is true. So, I mean, for our community members, I'm just advising you that just be careful in terms of these these kind of, of um, there is nothing solid, I would say, nothing concrete to stand on at this point. If it is that you're doing, you're doing, um, you know, a trade based on, on an announcement, be mindful that that's what you're doing, right? And not, and not an, an expectation that because it's a certain type of activity, it should respond a certain way, right? I wouldn't encourage you to invest in that way because we've seen where IPOs are concerned, person thinking because it's an IPO, it will trade a certain way and that has proven to change. So stock splits may not be traded in the same way. It's just something to bear in mind, right? But it is very interesting to see based on certain factors that, again, if, if certain things fall into place, then it, it could potentially be signaling turnaround for the company. They are 100 years old. They have done, I mean, they've shown their ability to kind of still be there after the different challenges they've had in the past. So those are all things of note and that are important to mention for the company. So the company has proven that it has the ability to continue to weather the storm, right? Which which can't be can't be understated. That is an important thing to note. The company is here 100 years later, right? Um so just bear that in mind. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to close it here, guys. I want to, again, just thank JMMB for sponsoring this video. Again, you can check out the link in, in, the, in the description to check out the Moneyline platform. I've, that's what I used in the stock review. Very useful tool to be able to see market data and, of course, be able to see, um, to, to manage your portfolio, et cetera, right? Uh, so we think of financial george i'm not sure when you'd have to probably um ask ask you in our telegram group i'm sure somebody will be able to, to let you know when um guys yes thank you Aline. please like the video um subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already uh stay tuned we have quite a number of announcements for this year coming up uh, we do have our our coaching program that starts in about two weeks that it's there's still time to register uh, so if you're if you're interested in getting um, you know kind of greater support, we do provide our content free of charge. But our coaching program are for persons who want to take that next step. Um, it is an eight week program, so it's not just a one a one and done session. We take you through a series of steps to help you become better stewards of your money. So that's something that if if you're interested, if that if that sounds like something that you would value then you know, sign up for that. It's The link is on our website, learngrowinvestclub.com. And we, as I said, we do have other announcements. I can't really make them here now. Um, but yeah, I really want to thank you for being here, guys. You're, you're welcome for the information. You know, share this, share this video, share this channel, and help others to learn and make informed investment decisions, right? So I'll see you next week for stocks to watch for 2023. You don't want to miss that one. It's going to be a great one. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn Grow Invest.